So tell us a little bit. You just had a paper come out. We'll go ahead and we'll talk about this a little bit as we go through our podcast. But um, the three big bullet points from this from this paper. Tell us a little bit about it. Absolutely. Um, so I'll give you a little history first and then I'll give you the three bullet points. So in 2019, I got together with a group of uh, physicians and other experts in the healthcare arena, and we wrote the first free to care position paper. I mean, I had no idea what was about to happen was going to happen, but um, we, we, uh, we took the position of stop having healthcare food fights. I mean, people will scream repeal the Affordable Care Act. People will scream Medicare for all. And both of those things are they're bumper stickers. They're slogans. They're not solutions. They're not getting to the the bottom line, which in that paper, the, the original free to care paper, we pointed out, um, it, it's the economy, stupid. You're all paying more. You're all getting less. And we should all care about that. Every citizen in America should care about that because what we have right now is not affordable. The cost keeps going up. And when it's not affordable with the cost that's one fifth of our nation's economy, it's not sustainable and uh, it, it matters for the future. So when we wrote that original paper, we gave, I believe, 34 actionable solutions. And then we put the paper out there and all of these uh, organizations came together. So we, Free to Care, uh, the coalition formed. Um, it's now 34 member groups uh, and that constitutes 8 million citizens. And 70,000 of those citizens, of those 8 million citizens are physicians. So they're all agreeing with these are the things that we can do to try to fix our health care so that we end up in a, in a more affordable, sustainable landscape. And if I, we, we just updated the new paper, it came out in September. If I had to give you those three big points there, open the books so we can see what we're paying and where the money's going. Uh, cut the glut, get rid of all the useless stuff that's costing time and money to the American patient and make everyone play by the same rules. Because most people don't realize that, you know, as as the legislative tinkering has continued, large organizations, large industries in America have special rules that are allowed kickbacks. They're allowed exemptions from transparency or they simply just pay a fee and no one realizes that they're breaking the law. I don't understand how you can trust people who are breaking the law. So, yeah, it is. You know, I will tell you, and we've talked about it on this podcast before, that, I mean, the kickbacks and the stuff that happens in healthcare would be illegal in any other industry. I mean, it, it, it's just crazy, you know, the, the collusion that goes on, and it's legal. So, number one, basically, open the books. You kind of mean transparency, correct? Oh, 100%. I mean, yeah. like... My goodness, you can see what you pay for everything except health care. Right. I mean, like, I if you want that new flat screen TV, you go to one store, you go to another. And look, I realize health care is a little bit of a different commodity. I understand. You know, it it is something that patients need. But at the same time, when you make it untransparent, when you continue to allow those who are profiting off the system to remain in the shadows, you're never going to get to the bottom of the cost. And if you don't get to the bottom of the cost, like it's useless to throw around those little bumper stickers, like re repeal the ACA or Medicare for all. They're just slogans. Like it's the economy, stupid. So look where the money's going. When you open up the paper, we, we give an introduction talking about like the status quo and why it's so bad. And then um, we go to a graph and you can pull that graph up on your screen if you want. Maybe your viewers would like to take a look at that. Like, if you look at this, like when when we took apart the money that we could see, um, and this is uh, information from the health system tracker, like uh, except for other, hospitals make up 31% of the national health care expenditures in 2020. But it's actually more than the 31%. Because hospitals now own a good portion of physicians and clinics. So shouldn't hospitals be the first place that we look when we're talking about transparency? But hospitals don't have transparent prices. We talk about how prices are so discrepant between different hospitals, how you can be paying like more than 10 times the amount for a colonoscopy in one section of the country than you would another. And the patient, you know, they're often anesthetized against that cost because it's covered up in their coverage, right? 
So like the patient, well, I don't have to bother to worry about that because I'm covered. But it does matter because if your coverage is paying for it, then your your premiums are going to go up later on down the line if you're paying out more for a procedure than you have to pay. Um, and like, actually, the good news for us is, is that like, you know, I think Americans, by and large, we're kind of tired of the bickering and the fighting. Two presidential administrations agree that we should have transparent costs for hospitals. The Trump administration made their transparency uh, executive order, put it out there uh, in, I forget which year, I think it was 2019. Um, and the Biden administration doubled down on the penalties of that Trump transparency rule. So we, we should be able to see in very simple format, machine readable files, how much hospitals are charging for each, uh, each procedure, each uh, surgery, each incidence of care for the cost of their, uh, their rooms. You know, if you needed to have a baby, what it would cost at each place. And the Biden administration doubled down the fees on that. And, you know, that's great news, but there's two pieces of bad news. Number one, only 15% of the hospitals are complying. In other words, 85% of the hospitals are flaunting the law and choosing to pay a penalty instead, which goes to show you that like, like the, the number one health expenditure driver in America is breaking the law. I mean, doesn't it concern right. everyone that they're breaking the law? And the second piece of bad news is when, um, you know, when the Biden administration doubled down very quietly in the small print, they gave an exception for Medicare Advantage plans. Now, I don't know, um, you probably know these numbers too, and I may get them wrong, but I believe 90% of patients who qualify for Medicare have either Medigap or Medicare Advantage. I mean, like sort of telling us that they feel the need to get something extra on top of Medicare. You know, how everyone says, well, Medicare, it works great. Well, if it's working so great, why do 90% of patients feel the need to buy something on top of Medicare? Great, great, great point. <laughs> yes, like, duh. but whatever the case, like for these private plans in Medicare Advantage, how can they get an exception? Why are we giving an exception for something as, uh, as elemental as transparency, you know, like if you feel the need to hide your cost, you're hiding something. And if you're hiding something, it must be because you have something to hide. And so when you don't have transparency, you can see in a, in a setting of coverage where we rely upon coverage as our model, you can see in like the second uh, page after this nice graph, you can see how we have like a rise in expenditure um, especially in hospitals. So if you pull up that next page of the paper, so take a look at this. Look at this top line here. Hospital prices have been growing more rapidly than other goods and services since 2000. There's actually an updated uh, 2021 version of this. Um, I found it on uh, American Enterprise Institute. Uh, like someone in there like has graphed this out. They get it from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, it's outpacing college tuition. I mean, we just graduated one from college and we have two more in. And I can tell you, it's like shocking what's happened to college tuition. You know, my husband and I went to Duke University Medical School. When we started in 1990, our tuition was $14,000 a year. I can tell you that even for the undergrads, it ain't $14,000 a year anymore. It's done this kind of an increase. So if you think about the, the location, we can see where most of the dollars is going from the previous graph hospitals, which is way past, you know, a third. And you see the, the, you know, incredible rise in hospital service cost. Why aren't we all demanding transparency? This is a kitchen table issue. It's not a red issue. It's not a blue issue. It's an American issue. We should all be able to see what it costs. And just demanding to know what hospital prices are doesn't mean that I'm against people getting care. I mean, this is the most elemental thing we could do. So before we even get to talking about let's build a new system, how can we build a new system when we don't know the economics of the system that we have right now?